Luke chapter 12 verse 6 You're singing about sparrows, right? The Bible has much to say about sparrows. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? Or in another word, are not five chicken worth 20 ringgit? But just now, our dear pastor was saying vegetables and chicken are increasing in price. How do you know that? <laughs> and he says, but not one of the sparrows is forgotten before God. And verse 7 tells us, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, for you are more value than many sparrows. Do not fear, do not worry, do not be concerned, do not be troubled. You are much, much more valuable than sparrows. Your very hairs are numbered. God is concerned if you got dandruff on your hair or you're losing hair. <laughs> He's concerned about everything about you. You are more valuable than anything else that He created. Not one sparrow can drop to the ground die without God knowing it. Don't you think that He knows when His children are going through trials and testings and challenges? Don't you think He knows when His children are sick or are troubled by many other things? If he watches over the sparrows, the birds, the air, how much more he watch over you? I was just listening not too long ago to a man who died and went to heaven. He, he died in his truck with his head slumped on his steering wheel with a heart attack. He went to heaven. He was not supposed to be there because he was an agnostic, so to say, hostile toward God. But yet his family, his wife, his children, his relatives, they were all Christians and they were praying for him. Six of them all together in his kitchen praying for him while he lay dead in the hospital mortuary and he was taken up to a place this dead man was taken up to a place and then an angel appeared to him and showed him certain parts of heaven and then he saw six streaks of light that's very bright that, that shoot forth from the horizon and these lights they shot straight to the throne the city of gold and six streaks of light and this man was a pilot so he knew about all these lights and effects of you know things in the sky and horizon he was bewildered by the six six different streaks of light and he asked the angel what are these lights and the angel say these are the prayers of your wife and your relative I want you to hear this not one single prayer is wasted before God and your prayer are like lights that went up 
And the prayers of his wife and relative is that God will give him a chance and bring him back. <laughs> and the angel told him, because of these six weeks of light, you are going back. <laughs> you know, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 5, in verse 8, that our prayers are like incense and in this bowls that the angels will present and the angels will come with harps worshipping and they bring the bowls of incense which are the prayers of the saints every prayer that you pray are valuable and they are powerful and they are presented before the Lord so you are worth worth you are worth more than sparrows cares for you he cares what happened to you he cares what you do with your life because he knows that what you do with your life will determine your eternal residence and it also will determine your earthly and spiritual well-being because every action that we take and we do has benefits and it also has consequences. Oh, you are worth more than sparrows. And we will run to Him because He is the source of truth. He is our truth. And so we come to you and we thank you, oh Jesus, you say that we are not to be concerned, be worried about our tomorrows. And you say, look at the lilies of the field. Even the majesty of Solomon are not arrayed like these lilies. Look at the birds. And your Father in heaven cares for every one of them. How much more He cares for you. You who are His choicest and most precious creation. You who are made in His likeness and in His image. So I want you even now just to Put yourself in the hand of the loving God. Let Him embrace you in His love and let His truth surround you. And let His light shine into you. Then dispel every deceptive lies that the devil has imposed into you oh that you are worth more than sparrows you are worth more than anything else in creation that's why he came and he died for you because you are worthy of it and so father we thank you for that the assurance of your love That you care for us. That's why the Bible says, Cast your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. And if He cares for you, don't you believe that He also cares what you put into your body, whether it's a vaccine or a food? Which is why now, I have to talk about something that I don't like to talk about. But I have no other choice but to talk about it. Because truth sets people free. But the lack of truth keeps people in bondage. And uh, I told... Pastor Tiara, that 
she has to edit this portion out and repost it so that everyone can hear this and do us a favor, viral it to as many as you could for the sake of saving people from deception so that truth can set them free. And guess what I'm going to talk about? I'm going to talk about the vaccine, the booster and the rooster. Hallelujah. Blessed be His name. You may be seated and yes, pay attention to what you are about to hear. I was sitting there. Now, this is so spontaneous. You know, it's unplanned, but God planned it all the while. I was seated over there. I was just having my personal devotion in the book of Hebrews, where Hebrew, something for me. So it's Hebrews. They didn't get it. It's okay. And I came to chapter 2 of Hebrews and verse 1, and I'm still open to it. And the Lord wouldn't allow me to move on, and he just captivated me and said, there's something I want to tell you here. He says, what's it, Lord? And now here we are. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, show them the verse. It says, therefore... We must give the more earnest heat. Another word for heat is attention. We must give more earnest attention to the things we have heard or we have learned, lest we can drift away into all kinds of falsehood and lies. And one of the major strategy of the devil is the weapon of lie. Because the lie empowers another lie, and that lie empowers another lie to the point that lie can become a stronghold in our life. Stronghold means he holds you strongly. That's why it's called stronghold. And that lie can hold you so strongly and keep you in the cocoon of your own world that you have failed to understand that somehow, subtly, you have subscribed yourself to a deceptive channel and you need to unsubscribe from that channel. Hallelujah. You know, you watch YouTube videos nowadays and you like that and you subscribe to that. Praise God, ARC, Asia Revival Center, YouTube is coming close to 600 subscribers. Praise God. So please don't unsubscribe from that. But you need to unsubscribe from the deceptive channel. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants us to do today. Because the Bible tells us very clearly that the Holy Spirit... Now give me John chapter 16, verse 13. And John 16, verse 13 tells us that the Holy Spirit... Is the spirit of truth, and he has come, and he is with you and I. And when he comes, this is one of his many job descriptions. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and then he will tell you, things to come. 
He will tell you about your future because He has a plan, a hope, and a future for every one of us. But you must go to Him. He is the Spirit of truth. He is the source of all truth. Hallelujah. And every time when I needed an answer about something, a question that rings in my mind that I am unclear of, what I'll do is I'll wait until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. You say, why is it 2, 3 o'clock in the morning? Because that's the only time where everything is quiet. You have to understand, when I go home, my house is like a republic. <laughs> so 2, 3 o'clock in the morning is where there is a calm. There's no disturbance. No one will text me on the phone. No one will come and call me. Nothing will happen. Everybody is sound asleep and I'm awake waiting on the Lord for answers. I've been doing this for years. That's why you see I'm like a panda bear. Hallelujah. Praise God. But it's worth it. So I want to tell you this, that every time you need an answer, don't go to commentaries or documentaries, <laughs> but always go to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth guide you into all truth. The Bible tells us, I'm giving you a few scriptures as a backdrop here because this is a very important thing that I want to bring it out to help the body of Christ to know how to discern what is false and what is true so that we can be guided into truth. The Bible also tells us Proverbs chapter 4 Verse 25 to 27, Proverbs 4, verse 25, show that word to them. Proverbs 4, 25, 26, 27, it says, Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. So when you say, let your eyes look straight ahead, don't, don't keep turning your head behind to see who's following you. It's only shadows. Then it says, verse 26, Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. And verse 27, do not turn to the right or the left. It means do not be double-minded. One minute, I want to go right. Next minute, I want to go left. Second minute, I want to go right. Fourth minute, I want to go left. You know what happened? You never go anywhere. That's why your life is in a circle. And so he says, keep your eyes straight ahead and your eyelids and your path, this aligns or parallel with Psalms 119 verse 105 that says, His word is a light to my path and a lamp to my every step, my, my feet. You get it? So how do you keep your eyes forward and also every step that you take? His Word. And the Word of God guide us, you see that, into all truth. And the Holy Spirit breathe upon the Word. That's why every time I come to the Lord, my 
Bible is open, and if I don't have a Bible, my heart is open. And it's both. And the Lord will bring to remembrance, and the Lord will show what is truth. Because truth set us free. But the lack of truth keeps us in bondage. So, with this much said, I want to speak about what is troubling a lot of people today. Especially, I saw in a group chat, a WhatsApp group chat, that was operated by a revival network that is nationwide of Malaysia, where there are certain people having foolish disputes. And on the chat itself, and we are talking about Christians bombarding each other with their opinion, and then they brought out many scientific videos and articles that say that if you have taken the Pfizer, you have two to five years to live, and I'm one of them. And so I told the Lord, I say if this is true, and it's a medical scientist who say that, I say, if this is true, hallelujah, I'm waiting for resurrection power. <laughs> and not only that, that's just one of many thousand others. Such videos and articles today that is being circulated and Many Christians subscribe to it. That's why I call that the deceptive channel that you need to unsubscribe from. Why is it deceptive? Because it is never the nature of God, listen, to bring fear and confusion. Our God is not a God of fear or confusion. He's a God of order and He is the God of truth and He is the God who leads us into all truth and He cares for us more than He cares for sparrows. Don't you think He cared enough for us not to take anything that is poisonous and harmful that can cause us to prematurely lose our life and we cannot fulfill our walk and our call on earth? Don't you think the Holy Spirit would be the first one to sound the alarm bell and say, don't go for that injection? If that is true, that it will cause you to lose your life? So my question again is where do we put our trust? Is it in the opinion of man? Is it in some medical laboratories that have done all kinds of search uh, researches? Or do we put our complete trust in the one who created us and who has a plan, a hope, and a future for us? You understand that? That's why for me and my household, we don't put our trust in chariots. We don't put our trust in horses. Uh, you never see us in a turf club. <laughs> we, we don't put our hope, our trust in anything else. We put our trust completely in the Lord. Because we know that He walks before us, He walks behind us, He leads and guides us into all truth. 
And I know, before I even come up here to talk, the Lord told me today, you will see an increase of people that will be critical of you. And sometimes that is the price we have to pay. People who don't want to hear the truth, who don't want to be set free by truth, who are somehow become so engrossed in their opinion, is going to hate what I'm going to say today. And I will make a few more enemies. But I love my enemies. <laughs> Hallelujah. And sometimes that is the price. That's why back in, the, back in biblical time, they stoned the prophets. Hallelujah. So, it's okay not to be popular in the eyes of man. Because it's more important to be obedient to God. Hallelujah. So, I want to say this. In my situation, back in the month of June and July, when churches were still closed and we were still in the national lockdown state, and the government gave a mandate that unless you are vaccinated, you cannot continue to have any kind of social activity and even opening back the houses of worship. And because of that, I seek God I fasted and I seek the Lord every day and every night for a considerable period of time. You know, we registered so late for our vaccination because we were waiting. We were waiting and waiting and waiting. And I asked the Lord to speak to me and also to show me signs and confirmation so that I would make the right decision because I know that God has placed me on a positional platform where every decision I make also affects many other people. If I make the wrong decision, you might not be here today. You get that? Because my decision does not only affect me personally, it affects the ministry, it affects everything that God has entrusted us to steward. So that's the reason why I have to make a decision that is accurate and is from God. I cannot make an own biased, selfish decision because it's going to cause many other people to either benefit from my decision or they will also face the consequence if I make a wrong decision. Which is why I fasted on liquid for considerable time to clear my flesh. We don't fast to twist God's hand. We fast to clear our garbage. To clear my mind, to clear myself so that I can hear the Lord. And after some time, this was back in July, on that night when everything was calm, the Republic went to sleep. <laughs> that I heard the Lord say this to me. If you don't, he didn't tell me that I did go for this, do this, do this. God sometimes doesn't prompt you in that way. He gives you a question so that you can meditate on it. 
and you can know what he is trying to lead you into. This is the ways of God that I've been so familiar for the past 18, 19 years of my life in ministry. And so, he asked me this, or he threw a question to me, and he said, if you don't go for vaccination, the church will not be able to have physical gathering. That was all he said to me, period. He didn't add on anything, so I'm not going to add on anything. That's all he said. And that prompted me to go back to his word. Because the word of God in Hebrews 10, 25 is very clear that you must not forsake physical gathering. Because that is what it means. The assembling of yourself together is not online. The assembling of yourself together, and some more he said, as in the manner of some who choose to go online, if I would paraphrase that, but he said we should assemble ourselves together because the word assembling is a physical act. In fact, it is a verb in the Greek structure. It means there is action to that word assemble. As some do. But we must do more. We must assemble ourselves more. So much more as we see the day. What day approaching? Christmas day? No. It's talking about the day of his return. Especially now that we know we are in the last days, this decade that we are in. This next Nine years, ten years, so now God never give you a precise date. Otherwise, you will start to worship the calendar. But He gives you seasons that you will discern and know what is the hour that we are living in. So when I look at the Word and say, Lord, Your Word says we must assemble. And if I don't obey the word, that verse in Hebrews 10.25, just one verse, Lord, I don't obey. I obey all the other verses in the Bible, but I will not obey that because we don't want to assemble. You know what James chapter 2, verse 10 says? Go there quickly. James chapter 2, verse 10, it says... If you stumble in just one word, you are guilty of all. Wow. It means that if you disobey just one verse, I can't remember the exact figure. I think it's 27 over 1,000 verses in the Bible. If you just, dis just disobey just one, you are guilty of disobeying all. That's a strong word from the Lord, you know. So, that settles it. I am willing to lay my life down, Lord. If this vaccine is going to harm me, so be it. I put my trust in you. And my heart is that I can obey the word of God and that the church can be open and that people who are on the same boat as me are able to come and worship you corporately. And if I did not make that choice, you won't be here today. That's why there are still many churches who are not open. Even in Penang, you know that? There are many churches who are not open. They prefer to go online, where many go offline. So, after that, 
I asked the Lord, can you show me more confirmation? And you know, the first thing he showed me was my two boys' medical book. You know, nowadays, children, they have that buku kesihatan where they have to record their vaccination. And do you know that as young as seven, six, seven years old, a child would have to, and it's necessary and it's mandatory, a child had to take at least 27 different vaccines. 27 times, I'm sorry. 27 times vaccination. And there are certain vaccines MMR, mom's measles, rubella, <laughs> and then chicken pox and, and so on, BCG, and you know, all this. How many of us have already went through that? We went through so many vaccinations in life. Because a vaccine is a vaccine, nothing else. I try that again. A vaccine is a vaccine. Why do I say that? I explain in a while. So the Lord showed me my boys' books, and then recently, recently, with this new mandate that the government did, that if you take certain vaccines and if you only have two doses, and if you don't take the third dose, you all know what I'm talking about, right? By February next year, your green pass license <laughs> will somehow return back to partial vaccination. And so, they require third doses. And I want to say this very quickly. I was against that. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that our body is able to produce enough antibodies after we have been vaccinated with two doses is enough to produce adequate antibodies to be able to fight of whatever virus, okay, and we should allow our natural antibodies to develop and to become stronger, and we should not be dependent on any other external infusion of antibodies. That was my opinion, was past tense. And I am also not very happy about them wanting to vaccinate our children as young as five years old, and especially now they say they bring the age down to three years old, because I have studied about child psychology and the child immune growth system, that a child develops antibodies as they grow. And the more they grow, the older they grow, the stronger their immune is. And there is what is called a herd immunity effect. And I studied that. And I researched on the 1917 Spanish flu that hit the world for two and a half years. But after the 30th month or so, and at that time, there is no such thing as vaccination. People had to go out to the streets in London and New York and everywhere in Europe with plastic bags to cover their face. They don't even have fancy full face masks like we have today. <laughs> Some more, don't know how many layers, you know. Oh. Oh. Back in those days, they used plastic bags. 
makeshift plastic bag tied around the loop of the ear, and that is how they go to work. And after about 30 months, no vaccination, after about 30 months, the Spanish flu evolved and became Spanish fly. <laughs> Bless our former health minister. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anyway. <laughs> okay, let's come back to this. Spanish flu evolved and it is still around today, but somehow the word Spanish has dropped off and only the word flu remains. Hello. Do you catch a flu now and then? So, what happens when you catch a flu? Take paracetamol, right? Or some people take hot chicken soup, <laughs> hot shower. After two, three days, you'll be well. And that is what COVID-19, or to be more scientific, SARS coronavirus is becoming. It's going to evolve because I seek the Lord on this. And science also back this up, that it's going to evolve and it's going to come to a day where it's going to be like a seasonal flu or what we call influenza. You don't need to have a lockdown because of influenza, right? You still go around living your life even though you know that. Come on, people of God. In the 80s, there was another SARS coronavirus that broke out and it was called the bird flu. Am I right? Some of you are still around at that time. Hallelujah. You were not born yesterday. And people in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore, and some other in Malaysia, they were wearing masks, but it happens for only a few months, and that bird flu fly off with the birds. <laughs> and the same is going to apply to this SARS coronavirus dot one nine <laughs> hallelujah and i've told you as well that you are looking at it already it's happening already pharmaceutical companies are now investing on treatment and cure come 2022 it will be more about what treatment we have rather than what vaccine we can take. Even though there will be still some companies that will continue to develop and advance their vaccination program so that it could be used as a standby for future outbreaks. This is wisdom that I'm speaking to you, not from my own word, but after many nights of seeking and waiting on the Lord until I cannot tahan anymore because I'm seeing Christians fighting against Christians because of their opinions. Now, you come and say, but what about this article done by this medical scientist? What about this article done by that doctor? What about this person saying that there is poison in the Pfizer two to five years lifespan after you've taken it? What about they who say this and that and all this? Now, can I tell you very quickly, first and foremost, there are more than one million. I'm telling you, I did my research. I Google it. It comes out more than one million on the search engine. There are more than one million videos and articles on evolution done by so-and-so professor, this professor, that scientist, this scientist, that. 
what does the Bible say about evolution is false. Am I right? In the beginning, God created. He didn't say, in the beginning, we came from a chim. So those one million over videos backed by scientific facts and so on are false. They are in the deception channel. Even though they have all the credentials of this professor, that scientist, this and that, who did the talk, who did the article, but they are false because the Word of God tells us we do not evolve. We were created. Right? So that in the first, in the first instance, it tells us that not every video or article done by so-and-so with credentials are correct. Because if it can happen with evolution, it can also happen with the vaccination articles that is circulating today. And then... Just yesterday, because this was happening in this group chat of Christian fighting Christians with the sword, ting ting tong tong, ting ting tong tong, and chopsticks also. <laughs> Nowadays we have chopsticks also in the headlines. Hallelujah, praise God. And so I seek the Lord. I say, Lord. This article done by this medical scientist, is it true? If it's not true, why would they do it? Hear this. Before you send any hate mails and start to stone me, hear this and may this truth set you free. The first thing I want you to know, vaccination or vaccines, is a multi-billion dollar business. All right? Are governments, including Malaysian governments, being pressured to purchase vaccination to, 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 for, his, for the population? Yes, because there are a lot of billions at stake. And that's what angered me because this pharmaceutical company should produce vaccine to put life first, to save life, not just to make money. But they are putting money first. You don't believe me? You go to any of those pharmaceutical companies, you will see that in their department, there is one department called the marketing department. That applies even for Panadol. Hello. By the way, do you know that you can also have side effects from Panadol? There was one record that I know of of someone who died of Panadol overdose. Panadol can give you side effects. By the way, don't you know that every prescription drugs are called prescription drugs because there is side effect? You take some of those drugs, even for a common flu or for stomach ache, you take more. Some people are allergic to it. There are always side effects in medication. It's nothing new. Hallelujah. But again, very quickly, we have a God who is an expert in kicking off those side effects. Keep that in mind. But come back to what I want to say. I asked the Lord, why does this person do this video? To badmouth this company, to badmouth this vaccine, this, this brand, that brand and all that. And all the time you will see that it is mostly about the main batches of main productions of vaccinations like Pfizer, Modena, AstraZeneca, or AstraTacana. <laughs> Most of the time, it's all about this. First thing I want you to know, the evil behind 
This is what the Lord showed to me. I'm not telling you from my own understanding. The evil behind big tech pharmaceutical company is sometimes they would pay even millions to a recognized doctor to make a false claim to attack that company. Why? Business competition. Are you hearing this? Oh, this company, this one, like that one, better don't go for that, go for the China one. Hello. Do you know that before COVID-19 came to the world stage, almost every clinic in the world Every private hospital, including General Hospital, uses Pfizer's medication, ointment, lotion, this and that, for their treatment and for surgeries and for all kinds of other medical purposes. That time, they were friends of Pfizer. Now, COVID-19 came about, Pfizer became the mark of the beast. Are you hearing this? And then they want to associate Bill Gates with Pfizer. That last year, someone came to me and a Christian brother came to me and said, what did you take up, Pastor? Pfizer. <laughs> you say, why do you react like that? You say uh, they put the chip inside Pfizer, you know, in three years' time you'll be brainwashed. My goodness. Even the devil cannot brainwash me. You think a vaccine can brainwash me? <laughs> and since I'm on that topic, let me just also enlighten you. The Prime Minister of Israel at that time, last year, Benjamin Netanyahu, the President of America at that time, Donald Trump, Prime Minister of England, Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of Germany, that lady Merkel, Angela Merkel. And not only that, and all those top kings and princes of Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and so on, they took Pfizer. Okay? Do you know that all these presidents, prime ministers, and kings, and so on, they have among their own councils, top medical scientists and doctors that will advise them. They have the best experts to advise them. And before they take anything, they will take that vaccine, take it to their own lab, dissect it, analyze it, check on it, Test and see if there's any other kind of poison that can harm King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia or any poison that can harm the Prime Minister of Israel. And do you know that Ayatollah of Iran also took it? Especially the Iranians. And I have also a source that told me our dear friend Kim, which Kim? North Korean Kim la, also took it. Don't you know that they have the top, the best experts that will analyze that? They are called the cup bearers because anything happened to the president of North Korea, these people will be beheaded, you know. Anyone that are in that kind of position would have that medicine or vaccine being tested again and again to prove that it will not harm their king or their president before they allow themselves to be injected. And if they deem it safe enough, then it means it's safe enough. 
But are there some who would be affected? Yes. Because when they produce the vaccine, they already said, especially with Pfizer, they said, out of one million, four may have severe symptoms. Especially you have comorbidities. That means you have illness, history of sickness in you. Out of one billion, four will have it. Do you know that they have, hear this, vaccinated more than two billion people? Hello? They have vaccinated more than two billion people. I'm talking about complete vaccination, two doses. Two billion people. You know what is the percentage of those who they have proven died from that? 4,000 plus. So look at the percentage again. It's 0 0.000000. If you want to be part of that 0 0.0000, go on. I have faith in a God that will protect me from being part of that statistic. Will there be a harm? Yes. In fact, can I say this to you? All of us are guinea pigs. Hello. Because the vaccine is still in its experimental stages. And because of the worldwide emergency, they have to rush to produce it. And we have to become the recipients. We are guinea pigs. We are the, the batches who are being experimented on. So in everything in life, there is a risk involved. Like I said, you can take Panadol and yet you can get side effect. There is always a risk involved. So what do we do when we do not have any other choice? When we know that life must go on, we are not called to hide in the cave and to fellowship with Alibaba. We are called to fellowship with Papa. So what do we do? We have to take a risk because the Bible says, if you will lay down your life for my sake, you will find it. And when I take the vaccine, this is what I pray. I say, Lord, I'm laying down my life for your sake. Your word says, I will find, I will not lose my life. You get it? And for those who are not willing to take the vaccine, I want to say this to you. Stop attacking those who took it. Because everyone has a free will to choose. If you wish to stay at home and stay safe and you do not want to take the vaccine, don't blame the church for not allowing you to come to church. In fact, we never disallow anyone to come to church. The church is the house of God. It's not my house. And it's open for everyone. And if you say that the church is disallowing you to come, you are wrong. You are listening to the devil. We want, in fact, it is my prayer since the month of October that those who are not vaccinated can also come back to church. Maybe there'll be a different SOP for you. Now with the self-test kit, just spit out your saliva every Sunday and you can come to church. That's my prayer. We are not here to, you know, to disallow anyone to come. And someone say, Pastor, I have faith to come. I will not in be infected. I will not infect others. Great. Come. But make sure you also have faith to pay the fine. <laughs> you get that? <laughs> Don't just have faith to come. We welcome you. But make sure you also have faith to pay the fine in case you are caught. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
we have to obey the government because the Bible tells us. Go there quickly. First, a second Pet First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. Let's go there very quickly. Hallelujah. Oh God Almighty. First Peter chapter two. Look at verse thirteen to verse seventeen. First Peter chapter two, verse thirteen onwards. Let me read to you. Therefore, it says, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Ordinance of man in the context here is talking about government, politicians who make laws. Subject yourself to it for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme, verse 14, or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. Or in the context, it means that if the government has good intention, to safeguard the population. As Christians, we are called to submit to that. It's the word of God. Verse 15, for this is the will of God. See that? That by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Verse 16, as free, yet not, being, not using liberty as a cloak for wise, but as born servants of God. Verse 17, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king, honor the prime minister, honor the president, honor the government. It's the word of God. We are to submit to the ordinance of a government. And as good Christians, we are called to be law-abiding citizens. So if the government says something like this, as good citizens, we abide, we obey the law, we don't break the law. The only time we can break or disobey the government, and the Bible gives us the evidence for that, in the book of Acts, in the early church, the only time you and I can stand bold and courageous and disobey the government is when the government forces you to renounce your faith and deny Jesus. I'll be the first one to disobey the government if that is the case. You hear that? We don't renounce our faith. We don't deny our Lord. We are not ashamed of Him publicly. So, if the government has good intention, as citizens of a nation, we are called to obey the ordinance of a government. That's what the Bible teaches us. So, if you choose not to be vaccinated, and the Bible gives us precedence all right, for what we should do, as good Christians, then I encourage you to prayerfully seek the Lord and to come to Him with an open mind, a neutral mind, not biased by your deception channel, unsubscribe from that, come to God with an open heart and an open mind and let the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. But if you still choose not to be vaccinated because you fear that it's going to harm your body, then my advice is pray that you'll be delivered from fear. Because God did not give us a spirit of fear. Fear in the very first place is not from God. Oh, I feel I, get, I will get this allergy or I feel I will get an inflammation of the heart. It means that you are not putting your trust and your faith in God who is able to deliver you, who is able to heal you. Are you hearing this? I'm not here to condemn people. I am here to say, yes, there is 
possibility of side effects from the vaccine, just as in anything else in medical science, there's always side effects. But I put my trust in the law that if I have to take that to obey what the Word of God says, then I have faith to believe He will protect me because the Bible says even if I drink poison, I will not be harmed because I'm doing it for righteousness' sake. But don't simply, don't purposely go and drink weed killer. You end up in hospital, I cannot come and visit you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't put the Lord your God to a test. But if you are put to a test, He defends you. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful. Anything else that I forget, Lord, that you want me to say to them? Oh, yes, it's coming to that. Mm. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. So, another thing. Just now I mentioned big tech company, pharmaceutical company, are evil because it's big money. It's billions of dollars at stake. They hired others to bad mouth. This is called one this is one of their marketing strategies. Okay? Another one that you want to hear is this. How come? How come there is no listen to this? He who has an ear, let him hear. How come there is no, none that I know of, no videos or articles that attack Sinovac? Why is it always attack the mRNA? Because Sinovac was a Chinese product. Now, yesterday, the Lord spoke to me. China has also a propaganda and it's nothing new. They would hire Western European doctors and scientists to speak bad about Western vaccination so that Chinese vaccination can sell. Did you get that? This is from the Lord. Hello? God gives you truth. I was shocked when I heard that. I said, well, this is true, Lord, really? Because you don't see anyone talking about Sinovac. Let that sing in for a while. And there has been this war. They call this the social media war. That's happening. So there are certain people behind it and governments behind it that are causing all this fear and confusion. Even in America itself, that's why nowadays I don't trust American news. I go to Israel news. I go to British news. Because there is still transparency in the good queen of England. America also has what is called an internal conflict between the far left and the far right. Even before all this COVID thing happened, there has always been this enmity between Democrats and Republicans. Everything Democrats do, Republicans would oppose. And they will stir up conspiracies to attack the Democrats. And many Republicans are Southern Baptists. That's why you have a lot of pastors and preachers in America who are anti-vax, who are preaching against that. It's not about faith or whatever. It's about a political agenda. Deep state between these two parties. And it is a Western American problem. But the thing with us Asian, we like to adapt everything that's of the West and also apply to ourselves. 
So that is their problem. It, we make it our problem. <laughs> Are you hearing this? The Western people are very strong about rights. So when you, something is forced upon them, they don't like, they say, infringement of human rights. So they start to protest. We follow what is good, but we spit out the bones. In fact, can I say this very quickly? And very clearly, as a child of God, listen, as a child of God and you are truly a child of God, all your rights have been surrendered to Jesus. I don't even have a right to myself anymore because I have placed the right to live in His hand. Because it's no longer we who live, but Christ live in us. It's no longer about your right or my right, but His right that makes everything right. As a child of God, we have crucified our life, our right, so that we can have abundant life, a life free of worries, free of all this trouble, free of all this confusion, free of fear. So we can have the peace and the joy and we can have the trust that we have in God that all will be well with us. And God rewards our faith. That's why I say it for almost two years now. Not, hear this, one single case in Axis Complex. Why? Because God honors faith. <laughs> That's the joke of the year, anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I cannot understand why people are going to the malls now Christ Christmas season. My goodness, I can't even find a parking at Gurney, you know. But nobody is coming to Axis. <laughs> and people are not afraid to go to the malls and to go out and jam-packed. Can I tell you this? The safest place the safest place to protect you from any viral infection is the house of God. It's safer than your own house. Because if you stay in your own house, your neighbor may sneeze, shut you, fly into your room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And then there are also people who say, Parents are, ah, somebody come and prophesy over me and say, you must not take the vaccine. <laughs> then what about the other person? Oh, God, give me the peace, I can take the vaccine. Then this person says, somebody prophesy and say, I cannot now. Is God double-minded? <laughs> That's a question. What is the source of the prophecy? Another thing, Ezekiel 14, 4 says, if you come to the prophet and to ask for a prophecy and you already have this set in your heart, you already have A in your heart, you come and say, God speak to me, whether it's A or B. How can God tell you it's B? Because you already put A in your heart. You already set up A. You already made up your mind. So, if you want to hear clearly from the Lord, go to Him with a neutral mind. Be open. Ask for confirmation from other neutral sources. Can I tell you quickly, I am not for the vaccine and neither am I against. I am neutral, but I balance and see what is true, what is righteous, and I follow what is right. 
go to a neutral source. Hallelujah. And so coming to this third dose booster that is now making noise louder than the rooster. <laughs> I was against that, honestly. But then, the Lord showed me my boy's medical book, MMR third dose, chicken pork third dose. And I say, oh, there are such things as third dose in vaccine. And then, the Lord also told me this. He didn't say you go for it. He, God doesn't speak in that such a way. He gives you hints, all right? And he told me this. Even in the biblical principle, when two or three agree, it is established. You hear that? It's a biblical principle when three comes to an agreement, something is established. So if the government is going to make it a law, the bottom line is we obey the law. But if it's not a law and you can choose not to, then I would prefer not to. You get it? I would prefer not to and allow myself to develop natural antibodies. But if it is a law, the Bible says, obey the law. Because the law is not meant to harm us. Like Pastor Tiara, after I received my vaccination and she is non-citizen yet, and so she was thinking whether she would be sidelined and she would have to wait until when, and then she would miss church and all that. And she asked the Lord, Lord, this was back in July, right? August, back in August, it was in August, as late as that, you see, we waited. And she asked the Lord, Lord, when will my turn be? And God spoke to her and said, Tonight, after church tonight, your appointment will appear in your My Sajatra. And two days from now, you will get your first dose. And true enough, after church, she went home. It appeared in her My Sajatra. She got her appointment. Two days later, she got her first dose. Did God speak correctly? Yes. So if God spoke and gave her a green light, why would God give great light to some other people? Maybe it's green light, but because you already put a red glasses on, you look at green light, also it becomes red. <laughs> you get that? And sometimes we already set up our mind. Oh, this is not for me. Well, then, if that is you, and you want to stay to that opinion, it's fine, but don't impose your opinion on other people. Because we are called to live in unity and to love one another. And listen, God does not divide. It's the devil who divides. If you are inclined to divide yourself, to segregate yourself, and this is where I'm going to come to and I'm going to end with this. Listen, I, I just learned not too long ago those who are not vaccinated Christians are now having secret underground church meeting. Very good. I clap my hand. I encourage you to meet together secretly because you are violating SOP, you know, but Early church also, they did that when they were persecuted by the Romans. So if you are doing that to build one another, to hear the word, to pray together, I clap my hand. But what I'm hearing is very, very scary. Because this 
unvaccinated group are meeting together and they are keeping all the other Christians who are vaccinated out, cannot join them. And they, this unvaccinated group, they say they are the end time church, the real church, prepare for the last days. And all of us are false. If that is you, you better get out quickly. Because the body of Christ is a body. It must never be separated or compartmentalized. That is true. This is for If that is you and you are joining any kind of fellowship among unvaccinated people and your group is teaching you that you are the true end time church and all of us are false, you better get out from that. I tell you this. After I got vaccinated, I fell more in love with Jesus. <laughs> That's my side effect. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and if someone loved Jesus more and more and more, how could they be false? Think. Don't let the devil deceive you. Because the devil is an expert in using the word of God and Twist it to feed you with a half-truth. A half-truth is not a wholesome truth. The devil will say, it is written. You tell him, correction. It is written like this. Not according to what you say. According to what the word says. Are you getting all this? So, that settles it. If the government makes it a law and that law is honoring God that you can come and worship Him freely without violating any law and trusting that He is able to keep you. So far, we are all fine, right? No one here, after your vaccination on the second day, you start to climb up a wall and talk to lizard. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Did that happen to you? No, right? You didn't start climbing up trees and start to talk to birds. <laughs> so it means that your DNA is still fine. Hallelujah. You are still human. Praise God. Hallelujah. The bottom line is this. Love the Lord your God. Because He is able to keep you in the secret place when nothing can harm you. And even poison that enters your body can be nullified. Hallelujah. It can be nullified. We have the power to sanctify what we consume. And again, Jesus also make it very clear. It is not what enters you that defiles you. It is what comes out from your heart that defiles your soul. Hallelujah. So, I believe that settles in. Let the rooster crow. And if it is so... Let it be. Whatever it is, our trust is in the power of prayer. Our trust is in the Lord. Our trust is in His covenant. And he says that none of the plagues that He put on the Egyptian will come near us because He is the Lord, our healer. As long as you put the blood of Jesus on the front post of the door of your heart and of your life, you are covered insured by the blood. But some Christians, you know, who somehow get infected by that, don't feel condemned. Sometimes because of your associations with other people out there, and you got it, but even if you got it, it's mild, and within a few days you are healed. Right? We have, we have known of people that have got it, and so what? They got it. After a few days, they were healed. Hallelujah. So, we put our trust 
in God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, Father, we just bless this. And we say, Lord, thank you for revealing us truth. Truth set us free. That we will shut our ear to every false articles that brings fear. But we will open our heart that promotes faith and trust in you. That regardless of what we know, that as long as we keep our eyes on you, all will be well, Lord. Hallelujah. So bless your people with this message today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>